Hey everyone and welcome to Isms by Josie. Today I'm going to be doing a super ultra cute design using the Halloween mystery box, Halloween mystery bag, and October mystery box from Varnail. For my returning subscribers, thank you so much for tuning in. And for my new viewers, please consider subscribing, share, hit that like button, leave a comment below, and click on that notification bell for future videos. As you know, I am a proud brand ambassador with Farnail, so if you like any of the items in this video, go ahead to the description box and click on my ambassador link, as well as use my 25% discount code ismsbyjosie. It'll definitely help me out and I greatly appreciate your support. For today's video, I wanted to try out the beautiful purple iridescent chunky glitters that came in the mystery box. Um, it was paired up with the uh, other orange iridescent glitters, so I know how these glitters are going to be. So I want to make sure that I get every different kind of glitter on this nail. So one difference that I'm doing this time uh, in the orange glitters, I just poured the suckers on there and um, I did have to do some filing. So here's a pro tip. Um, it does take a little bit longer, but it depends on what kind of evil you want to deal with. Do you want to deal with the filing or just want to deal with the tedious um, task of placing the glitters down in layers? So um, decide which one you'd want to do. If you want to check out that video of the orange glitters, um, just go back a few days. I think it was the um, pumpkin or jack-o'-lantern one. I'll leave a playlist at the end of this video that you can just play out. That definitely helps me and I greatly appreciate your support. But what we're doing here is we are laying down each glitter, making sure that each glitter is lying down fat, uh, flat, sorry, and hugging the nail. Um, what uh, some of these glitters have a little curve to it. I don't know why. Maybe it's in packing or storage or whatever at the facility. And when they dump these things, they just keep that shape. So um, if you put it to where the curve is out, you're going to have edges that stick up. And um, that's always not good because that will uh, lead to you having to file those down. So what I'm doing is I'm placing these down. If there's a little curve in there, I'm going ahead and flipping it um over because oh, i want those edges to point down it's easier to cover with the gel once the um, edges are pointing down on the surface on the nail um and i don't believe i did any filing on this uh so that's always good but like I said, I'm going through the first layer. The first layer, I'm going to put as much glitter as I can in each space. And I want to switch it up between the large hexagon iridescent ones to the very tiny, clear, um, powdery iridescent looking ones. So you just want to make sure you get a little bit of variety. And that's going to allow the look to look um, in depth with texture the colors are gonna um, be all different the uh, light is going to reflect off each facet it's gonna look really nice so the amount of effort you put on this is going to pay off so this uh because this is a process you guys and this video would have been a lot longer and i really um I'm trying not to spend a lot of time on these uh, videos for the past few days just because I've had some stuff going on. Some of you may or may not know. And I really don't, you know, want to sit here and chit chat and, you know, one, possibly divulge my whole life story the past few days. But also, um, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm putting in filler. So, all right, the next uh, couple clips, we're just going to speed this up. I did one layer, cured that. I'm now dropping down another layer. I believe I did uh, three layers, but um, we're going to continue the same process. The only thing is that it's going to be really hard to see where you did not put a glitter. So in this, I guess I would advise to just place it down. You'll know if you already put a glitter there, if it doesn't stick. 
so you don't have to force it to stick just allow it to just adhere to that um, uncured gel um, and uh, that will kind of keep the layers nice and even nice and simple stuff like that um, but yeah this is my third layer and this is going to cause great texture um, so like I said, it's going to look like you did encapsulate or had like some sort of glitter mix. And in reality, you didn't, you just placed these down and you didn't really have to file. If there was any filing on here, it's very minimal. So I like that, especially if you're just doing full cover tips and you're not doing like a built out extension using poly gel, hard gel, builder gel, acrylic fiber gel, any of that stuff, um, it's always more reasonable to kind of, um, you know, do things to where you don't have to pull out all the tools for something that's supposed to be simple. But yeah, here I'm whipping out my rainbow brush. This is Petal. And I'm using this because I need to create... This is going to be a mummy. I guess I didn't mention that in the beginning, but this is going to be a really cute mummy and I needed to create the bandages. So I wanted, uh, I didn't want to tape everything up and then do perfect lines. I mean, it's supposed to be bandages. It's not perfect. So um, I chose this petal brush. It's just enough to be thick to make a decent sized bandage. Here I'm just doing base coat again. I just want to make sure I make it nice and filled every um, crevice. It doesn't have to be super perfect, um, but because well, we are going to be filling it with this uh, pot gel. I'm using dark purple. This was just something I had. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to slap this on here and I wanted to do it this way because I want those edges. You see how I'm pushing the pot gel to um, squeeze out the edges because I wanted to have um, definition on the bandages without having to whip out another gel. That's another um, tip you can use if you don't want to, if you don't have it really, like once upon a time, I was really low on black and white. So I had to figure out other stuff, but, um, yeah, if you don't want to whip out another gel and another brush, you know, I'm just trying to, I already did so much work with the layering that I didn't want to whip out a detail brush and take forever to line that because you know me and my lines, I take a year and a day because I want to make sure that I get it right. But um, this pushes out the gel polish on the sides, creating its own line. I am going to fill it in um, later, so no worries about that. But I just want to lay this down to make sure that um, I've got the right bandage look. You know, it's all kind of haphazard. doesn't really have, I mean, at least it's, you know, across, the, you know, the nail. If you've seen previous designs doing a mummy. So um, at least, you know, it's supposed to be like that. But um, just trying to lay things out because I don't, I don't, I want some. It's really hard because I don't want the glitter to be. All out there I want it to be like a peekaboo kind of you know in between the bandages type look so at least that's what I was trying to go for hopefully <laughs> it worked out um, but yeah so this like I uh, did before this first part of it is going to be in slow-mo and because this video is longer than um, I, not too long, it's not crazy, but longer than I want it to be. We're going to speed up the next step so that we draw these bandages real quick because we still have to do one last part of these bandages, which is filling in um, the in-between. And the texture on this is going to be, you know me and my textures, I love textures. It's going to be great because we have the texture coming out from the edges of the bandages because we pushed that pot gel onto each side. Then I'm going to go back in with a detail brush and I'm going to um, fill it in with a, a thin layer of the, the pot gel inside, filling in those bandages. 
Um, and that's going to leave enough peekaboo for this really pretty um, glitter. This is such a purple nail. I love it. I mean, it's not exactly my favorite color, but you know me. I have the secret place, you know, happy place for purples because it does look really nice, the different shading. And once you get into the glitters, oh man, it just looks real nice. So here's my art brush. It's the shorter, skinnier detail brush. I love this because you can get in and make fine lines, but work with um, smaller um, areas. It, uh, so if I use like the de the longer, like my 18 millimeter on this, I thought about it, but um, because it's a long brush, it's really hard to control. I think long brushes are more for doing the filigree, something that you don't want to have total control over, that you just want to kind of um, manipulate to move around and have it how it ends up being. But the art brush is smaller and more controlled. So here I'm whipping out some solid building gel that I got. I got the clear and the white in case I do my charms for my night at the improv. And um, I'm taking little chunks of this and I'm going to be making eyeballies. And I wasn't too sure exactly how big of um, how big of an eyeball I wanted to make, but I think what I ended up doing was all right. So I'm just patting this down. The first eyeball is going to be in real time. And then um, the second eyeball is not going to be. This is interesting because uh, I've been real timing all these videos. This is the first video that I've time lapsed. Um, because it, it has uh, taken me longer than normal. Because there's just so much intricate things happening. Um... So this is kind of a little bit more complex than the other nails. But here I have my black liner. And I'm just going to use... The liner is perfect. It's, you know, I... Like I said, they're liners. The brushes are so skinny. I just need to make little dots on here. Um, I could have whipped out the art brush, but I didn't want to clean that off again. <laughs> so I'm just going to try to make do with the liner brush here, which is fine, but it's long. Like I said, the longer the brush, the harder it is to control. So when you want to do something controlled, like a, a pupil of an eyeball, um, you know, you're probably better off with a shorter brush, but... In my case here, I'm just going to work with what they have because I hardly work with the liner brushes. Um, I usually, even though these are nice, I still end up do, using my favorite 18 millimeter one. Um, one of these days, I'll, I'll probably use the, the liner brush um, for a full set. I don't know. We'll see. The other thing, too, is because... All the gel is at the stub of the brush and if anybody has experienced this because I'm sure you have all the gel kind of starts pulling down towards the brush I can you can see it right there actually if you didn't catch that and you can accidentally drip it on yourself on the nail so that's the other reason why I don't use the brushes in most uh, gel polishes let alone the liner brush but I'm just topping this off with no wipe top coat um, sealing everything in, making sure that the cracks under the eyeballs are all filled in. But here's the end result, you guys. My cute little mummy. Purple mummy with the, um, the glitter face. It's so pretty. And the eyeballs are just so cute. I just can't. I'm so glad I was able to make the eyeballs because I actually gave my eyeballs away. So... <laughs> Leave a comment below. Let me uh, know what you think of this design. So thank you so much for watching. This is Isms by Josie. Please share, like, and subscribe for future videos. And I'll see you again next time. Thanks. Bye.